Good morning and welcome to Friday. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. And uh, I'm just so happy to have you guys uh, to be a part of just all week long. And I want to really encourage you to, you know, don't be troubled, man. Don't don't let the things that are going on in the world trouble you. Amen. Don't let it happen. Praise God. All is well with you and your house. Uh, this morning, I specifically want to spend time on talking to you about, you know, don't be troubled. It, it's time for you to trouble your trouble. And when you're making these confessions and you're releasing power and you're releasing your faith, it's troubling to the devil. It's troubling to the kingdom of darkness. It's he just wants you to quit. And so what he'll do is try to um, distract you. And distraction is is an invasion of your thoughts. It's an intrusion of your mind to try to cause confusion. So anyway, welcome this morning and uh, God bless all of you who are here. God bless all of you who uh, have been a part of this. And um, Taff and I are just so extremely blessed to be able to be a part of your day and to be able to be a part of of what you're doing and, and what God is doing through your life. And uh, we're, we're, we're not only gonna get through this, but we're gonna come through um, we're not only glorifying God this, and giving God all the praise for all the things that he has done. And so I'm just so excited about it. And uh, Sean, we wanna welcome you this morning. And Barbara, you guys are welcome this morning. You know, we're giving a chance for everybody to log on. Elise, you're welcome this morning. We we thank you so much for being with us. And uh, Rose Jackson, God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. Kent, thank you so much for being here this morning. You know, I'm I'm preparing a series on the end times. I've I've not preached on that in a while, and I saw some things like uh, they had a chip party where they were inserting chips on the in, inside of people's hands. And right after he was able to use his hands to go and make a purchase. And I, I was blown away because uh, there's a lot of Bible prophecy that's being fulfilled right before our eyes. And a lot of people just don't even realize what's going on. Jesus is coming sooner than you think. He is coming sooner than you think. And so we want to get uh, not only prepared, but stay prepared for the coming of the Lord. Our hope is in the, the coming of the Lord. And uh, uh, Zoe and Mark Jackson, we appreciate you guys being here with us. And we're praying for people who are going through. That's what we do. We intercede for people who are hurting. We intercede for people who are oh, in grief. Imagine the number of lives that have been lost. Um, we, we pray for people who are you know, trying to figure out how to make it. Uh, people who are in fear of their jobs. We pray for you in the name of Jesus. The, uh, the other night I said that when you plead the blood of Jesus, one of the reasons you plead the blood of Jesus is uh, when you plead that blood, it says to Satan, you have to bypass. You have to, you can't touch this. And uh, during the Passover, the blood of Jesus well, it was the blood of animals at that time that was put on the doorpost and the death angel had to go past it. And, you know, I'm sure there was nothing really anointed or powerful when they actually applied the blood to the doorpost. But the power was that the enemy had to go past it. The death angel had to go past it. And so it may not seem like you're doing anything when you plead the blood of Jesus over your children, over your finances, over your house. But the power is the fact that Satan can't touch it. He's got to go past it. Whatever plans he had for your children, you plead the blood, he's got to bypass your children. Whatever plan he had for the destruction of your property, your homes, you plead the blood, he's got to go past it. Whatever destruction he had planned for your finances and trying to use lack to come against you, you plead the blood, he's got to go past it. So I plead the blood over your life right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. 
I plead the blood of Jesus over your finances. I plead the blood of Jesus over your employment. If you lost a job, you're going to get a better one. I plead the blood of Jesus over your relationships. I plead the blood of Jesus over your home, over your health in the name of Jesus. And you agree with me by saying amen. And you know what just happened? We just put the blood over all those things and Satan's got to go past it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's release some power this morning. Let's start off with our scripture for today. Uh, uh, let's look at the uh, in, in the book. Uh, we're talking about the word. So it's important that you learn how to be creative with the word. And I, I, I looked at this scripture in James chapter one, verse 22. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And he says, deceiving your own selves. So we, I declare that we are doers of the word and we're not deceived. We're doers of the word of God. Now, let's pray this prayer over that right now in the name of Jesus. Pray with me in Jesus name. Repeat after me. Lord, I ask you to help me. Think of new ways to do the word of God. You have all the fresh ideas that I'll ever need. So I'm looking to you to show me how to put the word in practice in my life. You are full of creative power, full of fresh ideas. So please open my eyes and show me how I can serve, how I can bless someone else or any other way I can become obedient to do the word that has been revealed so powerfully in my life. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Now, let's make this confession concerning this scripture, concerning being creative and doing God's word. Say this after me. I declare that I never run short of ideas on how to walk out the word of God that has been preached to me. I do what I've heard. I obey what I've read. I get better and better every day at finding ways to put into operation the word that God has so graciously brought into my life. I declare this by faith in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's declare Psalms 91 in our lives this morning. Let's do it again. Again, somebody says y'all do that every morning. Absolutely. We're letting that devil know we're not letting off the pedal. Psalms 91. Let's declare it. I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the most high. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are mine and they are my armor and they are my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me and my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him and he will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me 
from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and his power. I declare that he will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. Now let's make these confessions concerning our comfort and our strength. And we're gonna talk about how to, how to stay out of this trouble. Say out to me out loud, I am increasing in the knowledge of God. I am strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I am delivered from the power of darkness and I am translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I am born of God and I have world overcoming faith residing on the inside of me. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps my heart, guards my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus and things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of good report. I think on these things. I let no corrupt communication proceed out of my mouth, but that which is good to edify, that it may minister grace to the hearer. I grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby I'm sealed unto the day of redemption. I speak the truth of the word of God in love, and I grow up into the Lord Jesus Christ in all things. No man shall take me out of his hand, for I have eternal life. I let the peace of God rule in my heart, and I refuse to worry about anything. I will not let the word of God depart from before my eyes, for it is life to me, for I have found it, and it is health and healing to all my flesh. God is on my side. God is in me now. Who can be against me? He has given unto me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Therefore, I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am a believer and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak with new tongues. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Jesus gave me authority to use his name and that which I bind on the earth is bound in heaven. And that which I loose on the earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, I bind and cast down spiritual wickedness in high places and render them harmless and ineffective against me in the name of Jesus. I am complete in Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. For I am his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained that I should walk in them. In Jesus' name, amen. I tell you what, your day is set. Your day is set. Look at what he says, and I'll share this and I'll be done. Look at what he said in the book of uh uh, St. John chapter 14 and verse one, he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Boy, God ministered to me this morning about this. He said, don't you let your heart be troubled. In other words, 
you're now responsible for whether or not you're going to have a troubled heart all day today or you're going to resist the trouble that's trying to get in your heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Somebody says, well, how am I supposed to do that? I'm surrounded by trouble. Well, this is how you're supposed to do it. And I, we spoke of this another one other morning. You believe in God? Now, I'm asking you a question. Do you believe in God? He said, well, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Well, that's exactly what I do to let my to make sure my heart's not troubled. I believe in God. You are every time trouble knocks on the door, your response should be, you know, heart. I don't believe I'm going to let you be troubled today. I don't I don't think I'm going to let you be troubled today, heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? You believe in God. Say out loud. I believe in God. Therefore, my heart will not be troubled. So regardless of what you hear today, regardless of what you see today, regardless of what phone call you get today, let not your heart be troubled. Why? I believe God. So every time trouble knocks on the door, what you believe answers. What you believe responds. You believe God. You believe that he'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You believe that by his stripes you are healed. You believe that you are strengthened by God and you have an anointing. You believe that all the finished works of Jesus has been made available to you. You believe that the mercy of God's working on your behalf. You believe that the grace of God, his unmerited favor is working for you. Don't, don't look around and say to yourself, well, I don't deserve this today. Th that's right. That's what grace is. God doing stuff for you, you don't deserve. You're going to have a great day today. I speak it in the name of Jesus. It is time for you to rise strong in the Lord. I tell you, your presence, you, you have an anointing on your life. You're in the presence of God and your presence is going to demand an explanation. While the quarantine's going on and while, you know, uh, shelter in is going on, you're being clothed with the presence of God. You're being clothed with the anointing of God. And man, when you start getting around people, they're going to like, what is that? And you'll say, well, I've been spending my time with God. I've been spending my time in his presence, praise the Lord. And, and the presence of God in your life will demand an explanation. You be mightily blessed today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be blessed in everything you do. Bless somebody else. Go and minister to somebody else. Trouble your trouble with what you believe about what the word has said. God bless you. Um, I thank God for you. I'm going to see you uh, again on Monday. And uh, this weekend, join us for our Saturday night service at six. Uh, and then our Sunday morning service. I really believe if God doesn't change my mind, I'm going to continue the series on brokenness versus wholeness. There's a lot of broken people in the world. And sometimes you you give birth to fruit, uh, you know, like selfishness. That's a fruit of brokenness, meanness. That's a fruit of brokenness. There are a lot of things that are part of your character right now that may be a result of brokenness. You might be 50, but you're allowing the brokenness of uh, an eight year old to run your life. So pray for me this week. And if God will allow me, then I'm going to continue that series this coming Sunday. Taff and I love you. We pray for you. You're blessed today. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful day.